Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Today is April the 2nd, 2017. I have a really exciting uh, couple of uh, words and dreams that the Lord gave to me, and I've just been so busy today. I've been busy for the last three days, actually. We've been dealing with um, some surgery in, in our family. But nevertheless, I wanted to bring this to you today, so um, I'm going to keep these uh, separate. Um, they were pretty short, but I'm going to give them to you anyway because they're very important. Uh, normally, I would maybe share one, but the Lord wants me to share all three. So I'm going to give them to you in order and how they happened, okay? So on the 30th of March, um, I'm going to tell you what led up to this vision. I had been working all day dealing with stuff here on the farm, and I took to prayer at night and I had asked the Lord because the Lord had previously, and I'm for the first time I'm coming on to state this openly for whatever reasons, the Lord wants me now to speak this up front within the last month, the Lord has shown me Moses twice on separate occasions on two separate visions. I didn't understand it, of course, because they were just very quick, but I knew, I understood, uh, I received knowing that it was Moses. And so, with that in mind, on the 30th of March, that night, I took to prayer and I said, Lord, I don't know how you want me to proceed. I do understand that you're showing me Moses, but I don't understand how I'm supposed to proceed. So please, and I, I had gone... Uh, gotten on bended knee and awe and was talking with the Lord in prayer just before bedtime. And I ended up slipping into bed and I continued my prayer. And <clears throat> on this night, because of what I had prayed for, and that was for more information regarding how to proceed with the visions, the prior visions of Moses on two separate occasions within the last month. And so I was sitting there in bed and I was continuing my prayer and the Lord showed me um, what appeared to be like in the search engine bar of a YouTube and the words that were there. It was a written vision. And in that um, vision, the words God's 10 books was written. I could see it in the vision on what again appeared to be a YouTube search. Now, my spirit right away and just common sense told me that it was the Ten Commandments, especially because of what I had prayed for and the other things that he's been showing and having me read from, which is Genesis and Exodus. And so I knew that this centered around Moses. And that was that one. And I'm going to proceed because he wants me to voice the Ten Commandments um, in Exodus chapter 20. He wants me to go through these and just give us a reminder for, for all of us, the body of Christ, the saints, everybody, um, a newborn who's just coming to this channel. The Lord is asking at this pivotal moment in prophecy where um, we are about to be lifted um, so very close. We're so very near to the day of the rapture. But the Lord wants me to pose the Ten Commandments and for us to evaluate ourselves um, to see if we are, um, if we, we are um, abiding by the Ten Commandments because these are so very important to God Himself, our Father. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with that, and then I'll share the other two. So again, this was a vision, and the words were God's ten books, is what I received on the 30th of 2017 of March. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make, your, um, make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. He wanted me to go through these with you because it's very important and he's had me cover these before on previous assignments. So the first one is very clear. He is a jealous God and he only wants us to worship him. He is our only God. Um, now, the um, part about making carved images, okay, a lot of people who are used to um, what they were taught when they were younger, I also was taught this, okay, um, 
serving the Lord comes, uh, you acquire knowledge. You don't just know it. You acquire and he will correct you and tell you what he expects of you. And then you make those corrections accordingly. This is one of them right here because any traditional, um, you know, any families um, are going to have the crosses and, you know, the medallions, the rosaries, things of that nature. So this is what the Lord is is uh, touching on on this. And pardon me, I'm trying to get through this because a lot of people, they don't want to sit in on 20, 30 minute long videos. So I'm just giving this to you as quickly as possible. Um, he tells us specifically in this one that he does not want us to make carved images, any likeness of anything that is in heaven. So that means Jesus, you know, what maybe somebody might think is of God, um, angels, things of that nature. He's telling us he doesn't want anything, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. That's obvious. I'm not going to give him any authority, by the way, or that is in the water under the earth. So in the water under the earth is what he's telling us. And I won't touch on that one, but you know, you, you can go through these and try to understand the scriptures yourself as well. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. That means you're not you're not supposed to bow down to um, the Virgin Mary, a saint of the you know um, a statue of the Virgin Mary, a, a statue of Jesus, because nobody knows what Jesus looks like unless he has come to you personally, which. I have had the privilege of the Lord appearing to me in a vision at the beginning of my walk, but that's not what this is about. Okay. It says here that you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. And there's a reason for that. We're not to also um, worship, you know, with um, like the rosaries. And I know that that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but this is the truth. This is not, this is not my word. This is the word in the Bible. The Lord tells us not to do these things, okay? Now, I understand a lot of people have grown accustomed to doing these things. There's a lot of things that we've grown, um, we've grown accustomed to. They've become man-made uh, doctrines and uh, traditions, um, a lot of them involving paganism. You know, whether you want to believe it or not, the narrow, the narrow path is called the narrow path for a reason, Okay. Because you are to go by the Bible strictly on what it says. We cannot, um, guys, we cannot cherry pick. We cannot cherry pick and be selective of what we're going to do when honoring the Lord. So it's very important. He really wanted me. He's been, he's been really incessantly giving me that, those words for us to not be selective and be cherry picking out of the Bible because that's not how he wants us to be. Um, I'm going to move on um, to just go through these. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. And that's really why this portion, why I'm here now, um, is this vision was to go over God's expectations and what he wants from us. And those are strictly to follow the Ten Commandments. So as I'm going through these just go through them and you can go through them also on your own um, just to make sure that you're in alignment with what God expects from us. And um, he says he wants us to keep his commandments. So I'm going to move forward. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That's logical. We are not to use the, uh, the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is another um, tradition that the Catholic Church ended up implementing. The Roman Catholic Church ended up uh, implementing, making Sunday worship day. This is obvious, and I'm going to explain it in very simply. Think of the word Sunday. Sunday, sun. That is not the day that we're supposed to be celebrating the Sabbath. If you do some research on Jewish uh, tradition, the Sabbath, the Holy Sabbath that the Lord is telling us right here, again, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We are to keep the Sabbath holy and it starts at sundown on Friday evening and uh, Saturday through Saturday uh, sundown. So that is the Sabbath day. That is the true Sabbath day. And that is what you should be doing as followers in Christ, as those uh, following the narrow path. You want to make sure that you're um, keeping Saturday, the Sabbath, holy is what that means. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. It means anybody in the household, even a stranger that might be visiting you or a guest. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God is giving you. That is a given. You have respect for your parents, plain and simple. You honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder, simple. You shall not commit adultery. That is also simple, but adultery in the Lord's words in the scripture is also. It is not just exclusive to um, a physical adulterous affair. It is your eyes lusting for somebody else. That is considered adultery. So lusting for another who is not your husband or your wife, that is committing adultery. That is written in the Bible as well. You shall not steal. That's obvious. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You know, this is, this, this is a uh, pretty logical as well. You don't make lies and you don't, um, the Lord does not want us to be talking uh, bad against our neighbors, in other words. And uh, especially uh, not not being true um, is what he's talking about there. You shall not cover your neighbor's house, excuse me, neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is in your, that is your neighbor's. In other words, the Lord doesn't want us to want other people's things, um, being jealous of others, things of that nature. So that's what that, that's what he's having me cover today. Now that concludes, and I'm just wrapping this up. Um, that concludes how, um, the part about the Exodus happened. Um, as far as my vision goes, that's what the Lord showed me. And I was so excited to receive those words. And it was clear as day. I was sitting up in prayer and it was just amazing to see the words, God's 10 books. And again, it just came to me naturally, um, logically, and in my spirit, I knew that the Lord wanted me to cover um, the 10 commandments. Again, please take the time to go over the 10 commandments yourselves so that you know that you're aligning to what the Lord is expecting from us. Now on the 31st, I'm moving on. The 31st came and I was, um, I'd fallen asleep, whatnot. I did my, my traditional prayers. I get on my knees and I, and I, and I pray in an awe and I just really humble myself before the Lord and, and ask for forgiveness. You know, I mean, we all are flawed and we make error. We're, you know, we're trial and error. We're, we're humans. And, um, and I, I had prayed and, I ended up going to sleep and I ended up having a dream. And in that dream, it was very quick. I don't usually retain dreams. So what I do remember from the dream is that I was surrounded by angels. They were mature angels. And the reason I say mature angels is because I've been in dreams and visions where an angel appeared to me and they were little tiny. They were like little miniature. They were like, I'm going to show you how big they were. They were like this big and they were flying around me. And, um, and they always seem to be singing or um, they're very whimsical is what I can describe them as. But um, these particular angels were mature angels. They were adult angels and they were all floating around me. They were sky blue in color and they they were doing this to me. They were they were grabbing my my blouse and they were going like this, but they were playful. They were playing with me. I don't know what that what that means yet. I'm going to ask for more discernment because I feel that there's uh, importance to that and um, more significance of, of that happening. And then lastly, and again, I apologize for rushing through this. I, I simply am doing it for the viewers because I know you don't have a lot of time. And um, so last night, this was this was amazing. Um, and it was actually last night I fell asleep. I, I prayed and everything. And I was just about to wake up when I had this dream. So it, actually it was this morning just before I woke up. Because again, I don't retain my dreams very well. And uh, what I do remember from this dream was I was in heaven and they were, oh my God, uh, pardon me. Um, 
I don't know how to describe it. I was trying to describe it to my husband and he almost was getting sort of jealous. Um, but what it was, was, um, I was getting ready for my wedding and it was clear to me in the dream that I was getting ready for my wedding. But was, what was really awesome was I received understanding while I was having the dream that it was a David's bridal gown. And I knew at that particular moment, I knew the David symbolized the seed of David. And so it was, it was, um, granted to me to know that it was a David's bridal gown and I was surrounded by, and I received knowing about this. I wasn't told this, but I knew in the dream that those who were around me were preparing me. They were helping me. They were helping me get ready for my wet wedding. And, um, they were elders from heaven. They were the, I can't say the elders. They were elders in heaven and they were getting me prepared. One of them was doing my hair. One of them was, you know, like, uh, for example, putting my earrings on, but each one of them was, was doing something to me. They were preparing me for my wedding. And I just thought it was so amazing because just to receive that is such an honor. It's, it's just such an honor. And I just, I pray that I pray that this inspires our brothers and sisters because I know that all of us, you know, we've all been under spiritual attack, but, but please know, please know that if you are abiding by the Lord and you are striving, striving your very hardest daily to abide by the Ten Commandments that are so very important to our Father God, just know that we're almost home and just just stay, just stay positive as much as you can. I know that it's hard. Um, you know, there, I don't talk about our private life and we've had so much going on, but it's just by the grace of God that I'm able to get through this. So I just hope that this encourages you. And if I could just describe these, you know, the vision, even, even more than I could and, and the dreams that the Lord has given me, I just, I pray that this gives you hope. Um, because, you know, honestly, it might take you a couple of times as it did me too. Um, but please do not give up praying on your knees and asking the Lord to, sh to reveal something to you. Because I can tell you right now, he has revealed it to several of us that he indeed is pouring out his spirit upon all his flesh right now. So if there's ever been a time... Now is the time to start having a relationship with the Father, with the Lord, and asking them to reveal things to you. And I'm telling you right now, they will. They will. Don't be discouraged because you don't hear something the first or the 20th time. But please, please get on your knees and ana, as the Lord has told us. And, you know, humble yourselves before Him and just know that He loves you so very much. He loves all of us. And lastly, I'm just going to end it on, I wanted to share with you. I did hear back from Rachel, love Rachel, Rachel, who loves the Lord's channel. And, um, she is doing good. She's resting. The father has told her to rest. And, um, she did give apparently a last video and it had to do with famine, uh, that famine is coming. And that's what the Lord, um, had her do. And so she has to be obedient to him just as any of us do. So, um, she is doing good and, um, you know, she just sent her love. So I just wanted to let you guys know. I know a lot of you have asked um, for Sister Rachel and um, she's doing okay. And, and I just uh, ask all of you to keep her in your prayers because, you know, she she is a mighty uh, soldier of, of love, really, from the Lord. And um, it's important for all of us um, to pray for each other in the body of Christ because the Lord certainly would like to see us more unified so I just want to send my love to everybody. I love you all. Uh, you're all my brothers and sisters. And regardless of what's said out there or whatever, you know, um, I've always said I love my brothers and sisters. I do, you know, and um, we all have uh, our own gifts. And I'm, I'm happy for all of us, genuinely happy for each of us. So I love you guys. God bless you. And I hope that this makes you happy because I know it did me. So I'll uh, I'll stay in touch with um any words that I receive from the Lord. God bless you.